let's talk office ergonomics. No, not that kind of office. This kind of office. Working from home can mean battling the aches and pains from not so ergonomic workstations. <laughs> While some have formal home offices with a designated computer workstation, many of us make do with whatever seat or surface is most comfortable or private. There are a lot of variables to consider when applying office ergonomics to a home environment. Everyone's needs, equipment, spaces, and distractions are a little different. Think about your workspace at home, wherever it is. I'll help you identify ergonomic risk factors and solutions to help make your space the best it can be. We'll first look at informal work areas. I'll share a few tips on how to make these temporary workspaces a little more comfortable. Next, we'll dig into dedicated computer workstations and longer-term considerations for proper ergonomic postures and adjustments. I'll also provide a little guidance on what to purchase if you're thinking of setting up your own home office space. So let's get started. Ergo issues can crop up in just a short amount of time. So whether you're temporarily plugging in for a little while, changing up the scenery to break up the day, or jumping on your tablet to make a video call in another room, you could find yourself unintentionally working in awkward postures that can lead to discomfort. Although we always recommend having all the necessary equipment to properly set up your workstation, we understand sometimes time or budget may not allow for it. But don't worry, there are a few simple solutions to help you work around this. Start here. Find a stable, flat working surface. Avoid the urge to balance your laptop on a pillow, on your lap, while sitting on the sofa. <laughs> you need a portable work surface. A, a lap desk could be a good quick fix. Either way, the height of your elbow, when your arms are comfortably bent to meet your keyboard, should just about match the height of your work surface. Find a chair with a little stability to it and a back to support your back. <laughs> Use a rolled towel if you need a little extra lumbar support. Your feet should meet the ground. If they don't, place them on a stable box. Your screen should be about an arm's length away, and the top should be about eye level, unless you use multifocal lenses, in which case you'll likely need to lower your screen a little more. Grab a stack of books or a laptop stand to help position your screen to the proper height when using an external keyboard and mouse. If you have a small laptop screen, go to your display settings and increase the scale and layout. Use headphones for phone calls, virtual meetings, or simply to help block out distractions. Remember to give your eyes and body a rest by repositioning every 20 minutes or so. All of this can seem like a lot of rigmarole for a temporary solution, I assure you. A proper setup that removes pain and tension from your body can make a big impact in your physical and mental state. Once you do this a time or two, it becomes just like anything else, just another routine. Now let's talk about dedicated computer workstations. Companies are increasingly allowing their teams to work part-time or full-time from their homes. In these instances, a more permanent workspace is ideal, one with a desk, office chair, and external keyboard, mouse, and monitor, or two. There's an overwhelming amount of options out there for office equipment. So don't let it stress you out. <laughs> so much of the right setup comes down to the position of your body. Let's start with the ideal seated position. Ensure your back meets the lumbar support while sitting upright with your bottom all the way to the back of the chair. The seat pan should be adjusted so there are two to three inches of clearance between the back of your calf and the front edge of the seat. This allows for better circulation and flexibility in your hips and legs. Your legs should be parallel to the seat providing uniform support, and your feet should land flat on the ground, or a foot riser. If you're using armrests, make sure they are adjusted to support the elbow at resting height, which should be in line with the shoulder and not cause the shoulder to shrug. The armrest should not extend past the wrist. Envision alignment from your ears to your shoulders to your elbows and hips. Adjust the backrest position to support this position. Remember, it's okay to deviate from the ideal position and move around in your chair for short periods, but most of your day should follow these guidelines. Now let's talk through more general body positioning. 
And keep in mind, many of the tips for equipment placement and body positions apply whether you're sitting or standing. As with a temporary desk setup, your elbow height should match the work surface height, and your hands should meet the keyboard without stretching out in front of you like Superman or crunched back like a T-Rex. If you're finding your elbows and desk height aren't matching up, you may need to attach a keyboard tray to your desk. Make sure the tray is wide enough to fit both your keyboard and mouse and leaves enough room for your legs beneath your desk when seated. This quick fix can make a big impact. If you don't want to permanently attach the tray, look for a solution with clamps instead. Position your keyboard, mouse, and frequently used office equipment within easy reach and keep paperwork behind the keyboard or to the side of the monitor using a document holder or a stand if needed. If you find you need more surface area to work, you may want to consider purchasing a corner extender. If you choose a standing desk, make sure you wear comfortable shoes. Stand on a mat and shift your weight from one leg to the other. It's also a good idea to alternate time between standing and sitting. Moving on to the monitor. Screens should be placed about an arm's length away. If you're using more than one monitor, set them both at the same height. If one monitor serves as your primary, center it in front of you with the second one off to the side. If you use both monitors equally, center them equally. Try to position your monitor to avoid glare or screen reflection. And remember, the top of your screen should be about eye level, unless you're using multifocal lenses. For those who wear multifocal lenses, lower your screen to avoid lifting your chin and extending your neck and adjust the monitor distance to allow for proper focus. And finally, whether you're working from a home office or in a traditional office setting, take micro breaks throughout the day to alleviate tension and keep your body moving. Go for a short walk, reposition yourself in your chair, chat with a friend, or do a few deep breathing exercises. At the end of the day, reducing discomfort and tension means better focus and productivity. I hope you found this crash course helpful today. For more information, visit the resource library at accidentfund.com or contact your dedicated Accident Fund loss control contact.